Welcome, lords and ladies, back to Starfinder Spectacular Species. I am your host, the Go King, and before we get into the video, I want to talk about my plans for this series. With the Starfinder 2nd Edition playtest so near on the horizon, I'm going to focus on covering the species that got more detailed treatment in the Interstellar Species book. Once the playtest comes out, I will be focusing mostly on that, leaving this series dormant. However, if you have any species you specifically wanted to see covered, make sure to leave a comment below. For the foreseeable future, I will prioritize requests, making sure they get slotted into my schedule. Now, without further ado, I present the Raxalite. Out in the vast lies a planet named Raxel. This world is very volcanically active, and a lucky thing that is, because otherwise, its deep oceans would smother any potential land. That being said, the vast oceans gave rise to a wide variety of aquatic life that had little reason to move to the relatively minuscule and hostile land. A delicate ecosystem did arise on these islands, however. Plants, fungi, and small pollinator animals have found success in the volcanic soil. When one species of slow-moving plant rose to intelligence, these are the Raxalites, they quickly came to understand how delicate their ecosystem was. Several millennia later, most Raxalites do not live on the surface of their homeworld. Their remaining land settlements are dedicated to scientific research and careful resource harvesting. The largest of these is Everbranch, a tree carefully sculpted and molded to form a skyscraper. That may seem large, and it is impressive in its way, but a single skyscraper is a far cry from a metropolitan city. Now, Raxalites are much smaller than a human, they're tiny creatures, so if that space was dedicated to living space, it could still comfortably fit about 40,000 homes, by my reckoning. But a world's population would need much more space than that. Enter the Flying Cities. Designed a thousand years ago by Egvric Brilliance of Stars, these cities are the homes, industrial centers, and trade hubs of Raxalite society. The largest, Bloom EBS, serves as the contact point between Raxal and all their trade partners across the galaxy. Bloom EBS is the only legal place to dock a spaceship, which must then undergo a thorough decontamination, and its crew, if not native Raxalites, will be subject to polite, if extensive, questioning about their purpose for visiting. A significant part of the purpose of Bloom EBS as a trade hub between Raxal and other worlds is to protect Raxal's fragile land ecosystem. Most, if not all, permanent residents from other worlds are Xeno Wardens. In fact, Raxalite government has a strong working relationship with the Xeno Wardens. Bloom EBS's shipyards have been instrumental in the production of some of the Xeno Wardens' proudest ships. By now, you might be asking, how could a people of Barely mobile, tiny plants build these things. Answer? The Raxlite people are smart, adaptable, and willing to take as active a hand in their own biology as they were in managing their ecosystem. In short, augmentation. First, and truly universal among their people, was the Internal Mobility Augmentation System, or IMAS. This gave them the mobility typical of an animal. For a long time, eye mass was the only widespread augmentation, and to this day it is considered essential. The few Raxalites without a working eye mass likely lost theirs in a desperate attempt at survival. You see, while Raxalites do photosynthesize, this doesn't produce enough energy to sustain a mobile lifestyle. But in rare cases faced with starvation, a Raxalite can take root and enter a state of torpor. This action often destroys their eye mass and can be difficult to reverse. Now, a more recent augmentation, and not quite universal yet, is the Lifting Floret Activation Network, or LFAN. 
which was invented after first contact with larger species. Alphan is a network of tendrils that allow a Raxolite to dexterously manipulate objects made for medium creatures. A group of Raxolites sporting Alphan can even manipulate quite large and heavy objects. There are a handful of new feats presented here in interstellar species, focused on upgrading the Alphan system even more. These systems are considered so essential that depriving a sprout of either of them is tantamount to neglect. This is why almost all seeds are planted on one of Raxel's flying cities, where this tech is readily available. The home world is not a place a sprout would be neglected, and since they come in batches of 20, raising them is a community effort. Though the primary parent is always near for the full process. It takes a seedling two weeks to sprout and uproot. By the end of a year, they will grow their first bloom and be full adults in Raxolite society. Raxolites have both pollen and ovule, and are capable of self-pollination. Self-pollination, however, is stigmatized as other Raxolites are bound to question why the subject of conversation couldn't find a suitable mate. In pairing, Raxolites will usually mutually pollinate and typically raise their seedlings in the same community. Planting the seedling can be delayed indefinitely, and it isn't too uncommon for the parents to go their separate ways before planting. Some adventuring Raxolites have found that the fluff of their seeds can be very useful if held onto. While a flowering Raxolite can expect greater success in social scenarios, Seeding Raxolites are sometimes saved from dangerous falls by their ponytail of seeds. Raxolite culture values efficiency in communication, especially around topics of importance. This is why sprouts are given a single, simple, but never monosyllabic name. A Raxolite adds names as they grow in experience and accomplishment. Sometimes a Raxolite proves themselves of great honor or value and their community will give them a monosyllabic name in acknowledgement. While Raxolites will often refer to a friend with a short nickname or acronym, they view forgetting someone's name to be a grave insult. They also add extra syllables to a person's name when trying to be deliberately insulting. In Raxolite society, age is of little import. A young Raxolite who can pull on useful experiences or more importantly, relevant connections for a particular situation will be much better respected than an old Raxolite without meaningful connections. You see, social standing in Raxolite society is based on the number and quality of connections you can forge and maintain. As such, they are typically fast to both provide and call on favors. This all leads to a strong and mutually respectful society. A good thing, too, because the political questions they face are often multifaceted and divisive. In modeling their way of life after natural environments, they find a need to thread the needle between an ecosystem locked in stagnant stasis and one ravaged by rapid, uncontrolled change. This comes up in discussion of how strongly to pursue scientific advancement, if and what new augmentations should be made standard, and just how much influence they should allow outsiders, like the Xeno Wardens, to have on Raxel. But the Raxelites are a focused people with an eye to both environmental and societal stability. They'll likely thread that needle successfully. Before we wrap up, let's cover some of the basic stats for Raxelite characters. They have innate bonuses to dexterity, intelligence, and charisma, but their strength is significantly below galactic average. They're also rather fragile, which shouldn't be a surprise, given they rarely exceed 6 pounds. They have an average life expectancy around 86 years and top out at about 100 years. They have low light vision, and a bonus to saves versus effects plants would normally be immune to. We have already mentioned the benefits they gain from being either flowering or seeding, as well as the effects of their Elfan system. With that, we bring our exploration of the Raxolites to a close. Thank you all for visiting the realm. I have been your humble host, the Goking, and as always, travel with loyal companions.